Um, my name is Anna Lee, um, and today I want to just we'll be talking about uh, Mercer's managed pharmacy practice. Um, and so we have a pretty packed agenda. Um, so we'll start off with a glimpse into um, a few different career paths from my fellow colleagues and myself. Um, Katie, do you wanna flip to the next slide? Thanks, oh, back to the agenda. Um, so after our introductions, uh, we'll provide you with an overview of Mercer, who we are, what we do, um, what type of clients we work with, and, and how we service our clients. And then we'll leave some time um, at the end for, for some Q&A. Um, so I'll go ahead and jump into my career story um, and provide you with a little bit of background on myself. Um, I've been with Mercer for a little over three years now here in the Hartford office. Um, I was born and raised in Connecticut um, and went to college in state at the University of Connecticut, where I wanted to pursue pharmacy school. Uh, but obviously, that didn't happen, as you can tell from the title of the presentation. Um, so during my second year, I, I started working at CVS as a pharmacy technician. Um, and as most may know, other than filling scripts, um, this job requires a lot of interactions with customers and insurance companies, um, and we would have to make sure, you know, claims process, um, reach out to doctors if insurance company needs more information, um, and making sure members uh, take their prescriptions and, and refill them. So this was more of, you know, the front end of pharmacy. Um, I ended up not applying to pharmacy school, but majored in molecular and cellular biology. Um, and when I graduated, I, I knew I didn't want to work in retail forever. So I started looking and applied for a position as a clinical coordinator at Catamaran RX. Um, and that's how I entered into the PBM world. So as a clinical coordinator, um, I worked with different teams to run client utilization reports that help determine top drugs. Um, trends and costs, things that would kind of help the team determine strategies for the plan. And most of the time it was, it was pretty easy. I was dealing with internal teams and a lot of the reports were standard. Um, and about a year into this position, um, Catamaran was acquired by OptumRx, um, which some of you might have heard of. It's, it's one of the bigger PBMs um, out there today. And for months, um, I didn't know if I was going to lose my job. Um, but fortunately, my manager at the time was given a new team under Optum and asked me to join her. Um, and I transitioned into a role as a client, a clinical client specialist. Um, and I helped manage clients that were under 10,000 lives from a clinical aspect. So here's kind of where I started my career as a pharmacist by training. Um, and this was completely new to me. I loved it. Um, I would work on planned performance reports. So all of the reports that I was running as a clinical coordinator, um, I was now analyzing and putting together strategy decks for clients based on their specific utilization and disease states. Um, and so along with that, I got to bring on new clients. Um, and I actually got to work with a few Mercer consultants as I was doing that. So that's initially how I heard of Mercer and what they do. Um, during my time at Optum, I bought a condo uh, nearby my hometown. And after, I want to say about after two years, I felt as though I learned as much as I could in that position. And it was really difficult to move up within the company. Um, and since I had experience with retail and now the clinical side of the pharmacy world, I was very much curious about the financial aspect. Um, and when I was updating my profile on LinkedIn one day, I saw the listing for Mercer's pharmacy analyst role, um, which was downtown and just a few minutes from where I lived. And I decided to apply because I knew that if I work at Mercer, I could probably still apply everything that I've learned at Optum and then also learn more about the financial aspects of PBM contracts. Um, and let me tell you, I have learned so, so much since I've started here. Um, I joined as an analyst um, and quickly realized that I almost knew nothing about the financial 
and sales side of PBMs and, and how much it impacts not only clients, uh, but members as well. And in this role, I supported senior consultants um, with financial assessments and projections, um, implementations, which is uh, moving clients from one vendor to another. Um, in addition to that, we worked on pharmacy renewals and benchmarking. So you're kind of like a front line for obtaining data uh, from clients and vendors. Um, so making sure you get everything you need for your evaluation, um, which is very crucial, especially working with the deadlines that we have in consulting. Um, after about a year, I was promoted to um, a senior pharmacy analyst. So in addition to all the duties as I had um, as an analyst, you start to assist the senior consultants with presenting data and providing recommendations to clients about their plan, design, and any vendor programs and strategies. Um, this was all moving very quickly for me, um, but at the same time, I knew I wanted something a little more. So I spoke to my manager about other opportunities at Mercer and, and what else there was out there other than just focusing on financials but still sticking in the pharmacy realm. Um, and there was always a part of me that really wanted to explore project management. Um, and luckily there was a position open on the team for one of our Mercer collective groups. Um, that same year, I was promoted to an associate and started to dedicate 50% of my work to being a financial analyst and 50% to being a project manager for the collective. And this was great because in this split role, I continued to work on financials. Um, and now I'm learning some, I'm leading some client conversations and on my own um, and get to review work of the analysts. But at the same time, I am helping with the collective to make processes easier for, for billing, um, statement of work, contract audits, um, but most importantly, making sure the clients that are in this collective are satisfied. Um, so now what, what's next? Um, the next step at Mercer is to become a senior associate, but I still have so much to learn and, and pharmacy is so complex and it's continuously changing, whether it's rules and regulations or a change in the pharmacy landscape. Um, I'm honestly just trying to keep up and, and, and soak in all the knowledge from my colleagues, um, some that you'll hear from today. So working at Mercer has allowed me to kind of tap into different aspects of the pharmacy world. Um, and again, there's just still so much out there that I don't know. Um, and I'm, I'm certainly excited for the future. So that kind of wraps up my career path. Um, and so I'll hand it off to Nikesh, um, a senior pharmacy consultant on our uh, pharmacy team. Thanks, Anna. Um, yes, yeah, so hello, everyone. My name is Nikesh Desai. I'm a senior associate with the managed pharmacy practice. Um, I'm based out of Atlanta, um, and you'll see my tagline there saying a financial person posing as a pharmacist. Um, I think what you'll see here with the four individuals that we have on the call is the route to how we all got to Mercer, and especially in the pharmacy practices varied. Um, if we had 10 people here, they have 10 different stories. So um, there is no sort of one siloed way to, to get into this space. Um, we all kind of bring different backgrounds um, and experiences, and it certainly helps our team. Um, so just a little bit of background. Um, I was born in Chicago, um, and, but primarily raised in St. Louis. Um, we moved there when I was about uh, seven. And after um, finishing my school in St. Louis, I went to Indiana University where um, I really thought my path was uh, to go into the accounting world, become an accountant, number crunch, or um, work in internal audit. So I started with a big four accounting firm um, right out of college in Chicago in their um, audit practice, and then eventually moved into um, a private accounting role. And uh, that path is pretty typical for um, individuals with an accounting degree, you kind of know where you're going and can see that path. Um, however, I decided to move back to St. Louis, and um, there was a little-known company called Express Scripts, which um, once you get into the PBM and pharmacy world, um, you'll hear that name a lot if you haven't already. 
Um, they're one of the, the quote unquote, what we call big three um, PBMs, which are pharmacy benefit managers. Um, and I really didn't know what I was getting into. Um, they had a position that uh, was labeled as client audit. And I just saw the word audit and I thought I have a background in internal audit. So this is something I'll get into. Um, it turned out to not really be very similar to what my background was in um, accounting and auditing, but it was a position where Express Scripts clients were allowed to come in and audit um, Express Scripts and make sure they were living up to the terms of the contracts that they had with their clients. And through that process, I basically um, had the opportunity to learn the PBM space kind of front to back. Um, and it was extremely interesting. There's a lot of um, financial games that can be played. Um, and, and I was able to learn all, the, all those things in the client audit role and eventually moved into a financial role with Express Scripts. Um, so after about uh, five years there, I was looking for um, some other opportunities, and um, Mercer had a role in their pharmacy practice, which was based out of Atlanta as a senior financial now analyst, excuse me. Um, and basically, uh, the, I guess what the way I can describe it is, you know, a detective is really only as good as the uh, confidential informants that he has. Um, and that's kind of the move I made moving from Express Scripts to Mercer. So uh, we'll give you some background on Mercer and the clients that we work with. But the clients that were auditing Express Scripts at the time that I was with them are now my clients that I'm advocating for. So I had some background for specifically Express Scripts, but really uh, the tactic, tactics that they use um, are consistent across a lot of their competitors. Um, and so now I'm able to consult, consult our clients and give them insight um, into how their contracts are structured or the different financial games that um, the PBMs might play. Um, what the cost benefits are for certain programs that they want to put in place. My focus is primarily financial in nature, um, and we do have pharmacists on our team that help us with um, understanding the clinical aspects um, of uh, the various decisions our clients can make. So um, that's kind of my core competency. And since I've been here, uh, that was March of 2015, so almost six years now, um, I've, I've kind of grown into a more senior role, which um, has led to more um, management opportunities. Um, I was assigned a direct report um, a few years ago, and so I'm managing people under me, uh, along with having more uh, kind of lead opportunities within our uh, client teams. And, and the one other thing I should say is um, we have kind of internal and external clients. Um, and so our internal clients are people that are asking for support from our pharmacy team. Um, I'm able to kind of act as a lead with them as well, um, along with supporting um, the analysts that are um, reporting either to me directly or as part of an, an overall group. So um, it's been a, a pretty good learning opportunity. And, you know, Mercer has allowed me to grow substantially kind of from a, a, an intro as an analyst and then grow more on the management side as well. Um, so the only other things there, um, kind of on a personal side, I did get married in July of 2019, um, which turned out to be a blessing. <laughs> Understanding how all of um, the weddings have gone this year, um, or really last year of 2020, um, and you know what's next for me. Really, it's just kind of continuing to grow with Mercer. I really like um, the opportunities and the exposure that we get here. Um, and as a joke, I have there, hopefully to become an amateur golfer. Um, that's really the only outdoor activity that I've been doing since the pandemic's been ongoing. But um, it, I'm just kind of glad to grow with Mercer and kind of see where that goes. So um, I will turn it over to Melanie um, to get some background on herself. Good morning or good afternoon, all. I'm happy to join you guys on this call today. So um, from a personal perspective, I was born in San Antonio, Texas. I've been here all my life thus far. Um, I have a husband and two adult daughters, six grandchildren, and a huge Doberman that's a big baby. Um, you might see, and you know, my tagline is more than one way, so you might see there's something missing here from my career path, and that would be where, where did you go to college? Um, I did not go to college at all. Um, I just various life circumstances, various 
different goals that I had when I was younger um, and just wanting to be married, be a mom. Um, but from a job perspective, you can see that I held various jobs and in various industries that gave me a lot of uh, different experiences that I've been able to use over the years and grow into different roles. So, um, but over that time, things began to change for me as my kids got older um, and, and some of my goals changed from my, a career perspective. And I decided, well, I kind of really do want a career um, outside of the home. So um, I began my journey in the consulting world with Hewitt um, back in 1995, which I know I, I, that probably seems ancient and many, many years ago. <laughs> so um, that began, I really didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. I had a couple of friends that worked at Hewitt at the time and uh, the work that they did sounded very interesting to me. So um, was hired on initially as an admin assistant and it didn't take long, um, like, like a matter of months before I started realizing like, I, I can do a, a lot more than this. Um, not that that role is not important, but for me, I wanted to really grow and learn. Um, and so really began to have conversations with my managers to say, you know, I wanna do more. I didn't even know what more looked like at that point, but I wanted to do more. I wanted to grow, I wanted to learn. Um, and so uh, after a year, I was um, promoted to uh, an analyst in our health and benefits group. Um, from there, I took on management of one of our administrative platforms, which back then those were in the days of HMOs when a lot of companies had multiple HMOs. And so that platform managed eligibility and premium calculations. So I began managing that platform and that group that, that service clients um, for those administrative services. I also became a people manager, um, which that in and of itself teaches you a lot about people. And there were days absolutely where I, I, I would have rather sat in a back room, but that only lasted for about five minutes. And then um, I was very, became, you know, very much a people person, liked to interact with clients. So didn't want to be in the back room, you know, crunching numbers or doing things behind the scenes, but definitely wanted to have that client interaction. So I continued to grow in um, that career and moved to um, a project manager consultant in the health and benefits group. And so became more of a generalist consultant. So worked with clients across the board with medical, dental, life, vision. Um, and along the way had clients who had pharmacy projects. So I began to interact with our pharmacy group and on those clients where I had pharmacy projects. Um, and after about a year or so, our pharmacy practice lead at the time came to me and asked if I would join the pharmacy practice. And by then I'd had enough exposure to the practice that it, it really interested me to build depth of expertise versus as an h and generalist, having to know a little bit about everything, moving to the pharmacy group, I could really dive in, build that depth of expertise in the pharmacy world. Um, and then from there became more of a, started out as a pharmacy analyst and moving more toward the consultant role um, all while I was there at Hewitt for 16 years, which Hewitt, of course, became Aon Hewitt. And I think now they just go by Aon. Um, so that path really, you know, while 16 years may seem like a long time considering where I started from and where I ended, uh, a lot occurred over the years. Um, I had some great mentors along the way that, you know, where I really learned to take feedback and guidance and apply it. I also learned how to have those open conversations with my manager to express what I wanted to do um, from, from a business perspective and, um, you, you know, seek their guidance on how could I get to where I wanted to go. And, and honestly, I still along the way, I didn't really know 
exactly where I wanted to go. I just kind of kept going with the flow a little bit, but being very open, being a sponge to take in everything I could. I worked on some various projects with other groups along the way, like a, a comp and benefit um, project. And, and so I really tried to just open myself up to different experiences and kind of see where the path took me. And, um, and again, along with a lot of support from, from some very good people, uh, mentors and coaches and managers along the way. Um, so after that 16 years and the change from um, Hewitt to Aon, of course, you know, sometimes when those corporation, corporate changes happen, um, that can impact how you're doing your work and, and other things. So um, I decided, you know, it's probably time that I started kind of looking around. Uh, I wanted to stay in the pharmacy world. Um, but I started looking around and just opening myself up to doing some interviewing um, and uh, looking at some other opportunities. Um, I, I, during that time, I looked at possibly moving to the vendor side, um, actually had some interviews. Um, and at that time, the Mercer Pharmacy practice leader reached out to me and started some conversations. And so... I was never one to jump ship. Um, at the drop of a hat, I was thoughtful or tried to be very thoughtful in how I approached my next move um, and wanted to be sure I was in the right place. Um, and to me, a lot of being in the right place is the people that you work with. So the, the, what you do in your job is, is very important. But for me, there's a lot of importance about the people I work with, the kind of people I, I interact with on a day-to-day -day base, basis that makes me um, stay engaged in what I do. So um, I moved over to Mercer in 2011, started there as a senior associate, um, eventually moved up to principal, and then um, moved up to senior principal uh, along the way as well. Uh, I've continued people management responsibilities. Um, I have, um, I, my work is focused on the financial aspects of pharmacy. And as Akash was mentioning, uh, and Anna both talking about the clinical resources we have. So, um, you know, sometimes we, we play a pharmacist on TV, but we, most, for the most part, we leave that up to our clinical resources. So I do have financial oversight of the financial methodologies that we apply in our evaluations. Um, I lead one of our pharmacy collectives, um, do some business development sales work. Um, so we'll wear some, a variety of hats. I think what has kept me engaged in this career path uh, within pharmacy has been, um, you know, along with the things that I talked about, about the, the people being important, but also that this industry itself is ever changing. It's very dynamic. There are changes from, uh, you know, with new drugs coming to market, what could that mean for our clients members um, from a pricing perspective, from a clinical perspective, um, things uh, changing with the vendors. They're always changing. Um, they're, uh, you know, we're, we used to have the big five and now we're the big three just because of acquisitions uh, and, so, and mergers that have happened over the years. Um, so there's always something, there's new vendors coming to market all of the time. So learning about those new vendors, what could be some viable solutions for our clients? Uh, working with the clients, we're working with a wide variety of clients. Um, they vary in size, they vary in industry, uh, they all have their unique needs. So um, all of those things just contribute for me, keeping me engaged so that every day is not the same old routine. Um, there's there's something new every day. I'm continuously learning, um, and I think uh, if anything, you know, as you start your careers, is to really be open to that learning path, um, be open to feedback and applying it to your path. Um, look for those people who will be strong mentors and coaches to you. Um, and really align yourself with them. And um, that, that 
experienced guidance along the way will really help you in your in your career path. Um, what's next for me? Hopefully at some point retirement. I don't know when that'll be. <laughs> um, so several more years, but um, hoping to travel, spend more time with family, um, be more involved in some, some various volunteer activities. So at this point, I will turn it over to Kate Gergen to talk about her career path. Hello. Um, as you'll likely notice from um, my slide, I work for the government group, the GHSC government group. So under the same umbrella as my colleagues who've spoken with you this morning and this afternoon, um, but our clients in the government group are primarily state governments and mostly Medicaid. So um, as you've likely heard, there are lots of different opportunities at Mercer and I think my career path certainly highlights you know, another alternative to um, make being successful at Mercer. So I studied abroad in high school and you know, really from the time I was very young, I have been really interested in other cultures and people. Um, I went on to get my degree from Santa Clara uh, with a economics and Spanish um, double major and began a career in the banking and technology sectors. So interestingly, I did um, apply for a position at Hewitt um, just out of college and ended up kind of derailing my career in a little bit different, not derailing necessarily, but kind of going in a different direction. Um, and then ended up back at Mercer, um, another consulting firm, you know, later in my career. So uh, it was, you know, a great way to kind of kick off my career looking at, um, you know, some different um, sectors that I ended up working with at Mercer and learning about, um, you know, their business platforms and, and you know, their different issues. Uh, so after I got married, I moved to Phoenix and I was hired um, as an actuarial and financial analyst at Mercer. So um, when I first started, as I noted, I was working part-time as an actuarial analyst and part-time as a pharmacy analyst. Um, and really the only thing that I knew about actuaries was that they um, estimated your life expectancy. So basically they were like psychics with like some math skills to me. Um, and certainly as I've been at Mercer for 20 years now, I, I understand that actuaries do a lot more than um, predicting life expectancy, but um, that was kind of the knowledge that I came in with. Um, and <clears throat> as I worked, the longer that I worked at Mercer, I realized that pharmacy really was um, a specific interest of mine. So when I was prom promoted to an associate, I became um, a full-time full pharmacy um, associate and I worked on both commercial and government clients at this time. So um, I had clients like, you know, Apple and um, uh, certain state um, employees. And then I also worked on Medicaid clients. So it was a great way for me to kind of see the entire um, pharmacy realm and all of the work that Mercer did um, in working with our clients and helping them with their pharmacy benefits. Uh, at Mercer did um, support me getting my MBA uh, and you know through the tuition assistance program. So I got my MBA through Mercer and then um, after I had a daughter I was promoted to senior associate and I moved to the government group full-time. Um, I still have some clients currently that are kind of that hybrid, uh, meaning that they, um, we, we as Mercer assist them with commercial like projects such as procurements or benefit design, um, vendor management, um, but they really um, are also considered government clients in that they are in the government space. So they're state employees, they're county employees. Um, so like I said, they're kind of that hybrid. So it allowed me to um, stay, knowledgeable enough about the commercial market that you know I can still support my clients and yet also bring into um, bring to them my knowledge on you know how government works because government operates very differently than the commercial world as well as like I said focus um, on my Medicaid clients as well. Uh, so um, I had a son um, during that time and then I also as I said I'm, I'm very interested in other cultures and learning lots about you know different people um, and so I went and received my Kundalini Yoga teacher certificate and um, my Reiki level three certificate um, during this time as well. So one of the things that I wanted to highlight with this is 
uh, a lot of my colleagues have mentioned all of the different you know, types of client interactions that you can have large clients and small clients um, you know, at Mercer and work on lots of different projects. Um, but Mercer also allows you the opportunity to grow yourself. So um, I, during much of this time, um, after I had my daughter, I went um, as a, I became a part-time employee. So I was allowed the, the balance to continue to contribute to Mercer as an employee and serve my clients, as well as to explore other interests in my life and pursue areas that uh, were important to my personal development as well. Um, so around the, a little more recently, I was promoted to principal and I also became the Colorado client leader. So that really has um, stretched my skill set in managing a specific um, state is uh, really interesting because you get to know a lot about their state and a lot about the politics within their state. Um, you get to know them very, very, inter very intimately. Um, every state is different. You would think that, you know, Medicaid is the same in all states as it's uh, a federal program, but because it's run at the state level, it's very um, unique state to state. So uh, Melanie really talked a lot about this um, in her presentation as well. Um, but one of the things that I really enjoy the most about working at Mercer is that I'm always learning. I'm always growing. I'm always stretching myself to think through how I can better relate to my clients, what information I can learn um, so I can be um, a strong supporter for them so I can offer them valuable information. And no day is you know, like the previous day, every day is different. Um, and I, I really appreciated the opportunities that Mercer has given me to grow both professionally and personally. Um, starting in 2020, I uh, spoke with uh, leadership and I started offering Meditation Mondays um, at Mercer. And so this is a, um, a time when anyone who's interested can just gather together for 30 minutes and participate in a community meditation um, that we do on Mondays. It's been really well received. And to me, that really highlights um, Mercer's desire to look at the whole, the whole employee and to serve the, the whole employee. I've done lots of volunteering through Mercer. Um, we have, um, you know, especially recently, he put a lot of focus on making our um, diversity groups very strong and looking at, again, the whole person and making sure that we are um, not only growing financially and making sure that our bottom line continues to grow, but um, that we are, as a company, um, you know, making sure that all of our employees have the opportunity to um, be seen, be heard, and express their interests both inside and outside of their, their workplace. So um, here are a few other items that I'm working on right now. I created a women's collective. I'm developing a podcast. Um, I love spending time volunteering and, um, you know, love my family. They're great. Keep me on my toes. So that is my career path in a nutshell. I am a generalist posing as a specialist. So I'm gonna turn it back to Nikesh and he's gonna walk us through the next few slides. Yep, thanks Kate. Um, so if you wanna flip just, yeah, to the Marshall McLennan slide. So this will just give you a general background of Marshall McLennan as a whole um, and how we fit in as the um, specialty pharmacy practice or, or you'll hear MPP, which is the managed pharmacy practice. So. Marshall McLennan has kind of two core competencies, so risk and insurance services, where they're actually selling um, risk insurance and reinsurance products, whereas on the consulting side, um, we're really just provi providing our clients with kind of a broad overview or research and analysis and opinions on products that they can um, plug into their various benefit plans depending on um, which organization they're aligned with. So within Mercer, um, we have three areas, wealth, health, and career. Um, our focus here is on the health um, vertical, and then the pharmacy practice sits under that. Um, I, I think we can move on from this page. I know we want to get to really um, to talk about the pharmacy practice as a whole. So um, I won't spend as much time kind of diving into the details of each one of these. So within the employer segment um, under 
the health group, um, you know, what do we actually do? So employee benefit strategy and pro brokerage, um, that's our primary um, kind of connection with our clients. Uh, we help our employers with um, the development of their benefit strategies and solutions. Um, and part of that really is where we get into um, the pharmacy section. So you'll see that third box to the right, specialty health and wellness benefits. Um, we have a lot of expertise um, within specific areas. Um, primarily what you'll hear is health and wellness, um, which is our total um, health management program. And they talk about all kinds of things that our um, employers can offer to, excuse me, um, their employees um, different types of programs that they can offer for total health management. We as the pharmacy practice are a very specialized vertical within um, the health group and, and we'll talk about that more um, in a few slides. So Kate, if you wanna flip to the next slide, um, I think this slide gives a good um, kind of background of what are all the considerations um, that we need to kind of go through as we're talking about health benefits that our clients offer their various employees and by extension, their dependents. So as you look at this graph um, where everyone sits in an age bracket, there's different considerations um, between kind of the early part of your career versus the late, later, latter part of your career um, and what our clients have to consider what they're offering for their um, various employees. So. Um, just to give you an example, I have a client um, where their average uh, member age, so that includes both the employees and their various dependents, um, their average age is only 28. So what that means from a health benefits perspective is they're not really using a um, high amount of prescription drugs. We tend to see that ramp up as the age gets higher um, because you're generally on more maintenance medications. Um, so if you think about you know, controlling your cholesterol or diabetes, um, those types of medications start to come in the older that you get, um, whereas on the younger side, they're really not focused on those pres prescription drugs. So what do we, as a pharmacy practice, consult for those clients? Well, one is, um, you know, putting in the proper control so they're helping to mitigate costs as those employees do start to age um, and start using pres prescription drugs more frequently. Um, the other concern is because they don't have a high spend, uh, one one utilizer can really swing their spend rather significantly. So um, there are certain specialty medications that can cost anywhere from a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars, all the way up to um, eight or nine hundred thousand dollars a year. Um, and with a younger population, one medication can shift that pretty drastically. So um, we have clients of all sizes and across all ages, and within each of those, it really really requires. Um, kind of a detailed analysis to say, you know, what's the best fit for them and what are their primary concerns. Um, the other benefit is um, a lot of our various clients will ask us what other clients are doing um, that have the same demographics as them. Um, okay, if you want to flip to the next slide. Um, so these are the various different types of benefit plans um, that an employer can offer. Um, and so when we talk about employer or and or employee paid, uh, the clarification here is so when you think about a health plan, um, you may be using a card today that's either funded from um, someone you're related to or through um, your university, you'll see a card that might have the name of a carrier. So it might say Aetna or Anthem or Blue Cross Blue Shield. Um, the majority of the time, the employer is actually paying uh, the claims that are related to those cards. So um, when we look at medical and prescription drug, which is what we're focused on, uh, the employer is really making all the decisions there as to what's covered and not covered. Um, it's administered by a third party, and they're generally using the programs that are um, available, but the employer is actually paying all those claims. Um, and then towards the right, so fully employee pay, these are voluntary benefits. So things like life insurance or disability or pet insurance, these are various um, benefits that our employers can offer to their employees, but uh, the employer is actually not paying any part of um, that benefit. The employee is fully funding that, uh, but they are kind of nice to have benefits uh, for the employee to have made available to them. Um, so I'm gonna pause there. Um, and then I believe that uh, Melanie or Kate, you're taking on uh, the, the next section there. Yep. 
Melanie. Um, so let's kind of dive further into the core services that our Mer Mercer Health Group, Health and Benefits Group offers to our clients. Um, and, and, you know, something at, at the end of the day that what we're here to do is to serve our clients. We wouldn't be here if we didn't have clients who have different needs requiring um, the uh, the capabilities that we offer, the expertise that we offer. Um, so we are here. So we are very client focused um, company, uh, and, and that's what we do day in and day out. So some of those core services that we that bring value to our clients is. Um, the strategic support that we provide to them. So this is this can can run the gamut. It can be very different by client on what we bring to them from a strategic perspective. But helping them to understand what are their needs, what um, what's happening in the marketplace that might change what they need. Um, and then working with them on developing a roadmap. So a lot of times when we start those conversations with clients, we're starting with helping them map out a five-year plan. Um, here's where they are today. So understanding that, here's where they would like to be, and then how do we get there? So a lot of conversations with clients, understanding their needs um, and how we can help them um, through the services that we offer. Um, and again, that can, can really run, run a wide spec, uh, spectrum of things that we bring to our clients. Um, part of that is just to educate clients. Um, you know, especially in our pharmacy world, it is because pharmacy has, has become so complex over the years. Um, many of our clients, we may have some clients who they're, um, benefit managers, their benefit directors, their global directors, the, the people that we work with on our day to day, um, they may not know all the ins and outs of pharmacies. So we really can educate our clients and what, sh what is of importance to them. What do they need to focus their time? They have many other things on their plate. So we have to help them, you know, bring to light what are the things um, that really need their attention and what, what do they need to learn about in order to make sure they're incorporating the right things um, in their strategies. Um, so I really like working with clients who really need that education, but I also, also like working with clients who are at the other end of the spectrum who are pretty pharmacy savvy. They, um, they, are willing to push the envelope. They want to be cutting edge. They want to be in the lead. And so having those kind of conversations is very engaging just to see what different people come up with. And so we can brainstorm around their ideas and what they're willing to do and help them again to develop that, uh, that roadmap uh, and what it looks like for them. Um, other core services, so just the day-to-day -day support. Issues come up along the way, helping to escalate those issues, whether it's with vendors, with their members, um, with any kind of compliance type information or guidance that they might need. Um, so working with them on a day-to-day -day basis, and, and basically we're acting as an extension of their benefits department. Um, to add value and bring them value in with the expertise that we can bring. Um, the communications area, so helping them from, from different aspects of communication, so whether that's putting together open enrollment materials, um, any kind of technical communications, um, helping them plan out um, their open enrollment, what's the timing of that, having those uh, employee uh, benefit fairs, um, and I've actually we've had a couple of project over projects over the years where I helped train human resource leaders um, to then go out and hold these benefit fairs to communicate out what were the changes coming up for their members that next year. Um, so I did a train the trainer sessions. I also did employee benefit fairs directly and explained to the employees 
um, at these meetings what their changes were and helping them understand um, how those changes would impact them. So that can take on the, uh, you know, different forms uh, of communication that we can help them with. Um, financial analysis is probably key to our world um, because for everything you bring to a client that they may want to consider, you have to bring to them the analysis that backs it up that says, well, what's the financial impact? What's the member impact? Um, how will this impact you as an organization? Um, so we do a lot of different analysis of different kinds, um, whether it's from um, setting their budgets, their contributions, um, bringing to the client to tell them, you know, what should your, your employees be paying for their benefits? So helping um, set those contributions and their, their internal financial budgets. Um, so a lot of analysis in the work that we do to back up the recommendations that we're making to our clients. Um, in addition to that is, is benchmarking. Clients are very interested in um, how do they compare to others in the industry uh, in terms of you know, what, what are they offering for their benefits and are we competitive to our benefits. This is especially visible in the oil and gas industry because they're trying to attract and retain their talent. And so if you don't have a competitive benefits package to offer to your employees, then you could lose people or, or people might not want to apply to your organization. So, um, and then just to help them along the way to be able to manage those benefits, change them as needed along the way. So uh, we can pull reporting and benchmarking from various sources. So that's an important part of what we do as well. Uh, last item on this slide is, is legislative from a legislative perspective. So, um, it, you know, the legislation changes all the time and how bringing our experts in and to help clients understand how does any kind of a le legislative regulatory change might impact them and what do they need to do about it. So um, helping them understand the changes, what it might mean for them, um, pulling together different communications around that and giving them up, uh, updates along the way. Um, so healthcare reform is, is a big one that has kept us very busy over the years. Um, COVID in 2020, um, as, as that all started rolling out, helping clients to understand what does it mean? How do we, what do we need to do differently? What do we need to consider? Um, so bringing all that to the client, having those conversations and helping them make decisions and providing our recommendations. Okay, so I'm going to keep moving here because I know we're starting to get short on time. Um, so this slide just kind of depicts what a, a client team might look like. So our health and benefits team is what we consider our, our client team. Um, or the core team. And so our client team is, are the ones that are engaging with the clients and um, identifying needs, you know, working to propose projects to them um, or more of a long-term arrangement, um, getting a broker of record arrangement set up with a client so that we can be their, their health and benefits consultant. Um, so on that core team, um, it, you know, you've got different levels that are involved there. The, they work very closely with our sales team. There's a, a client manager that just makes sure that the overall relationship is going well, um, regardless of what projects, different projects are taking place. So at some point, typically with a client, they will recognize the need to bring in different um, resources to help bring value to the client and deliver uh, different projects. Um, so the specialty resources, and so you'll see all of these listed here and you'll see the pharmacy um, group here, the pharmacy consultant. So from a pharmacy perspective, um, they'll, you know, recognize, okay, we need to figure out what, what do we need, how can we help them from a pharmacy perspective? And so they'll come to our specialty pharmacy group to um, pull in resources 
to then start working with that client to identify needs and identify um, what what kind of projects we can perform for them to that will bring value to them. Um, but it you know it can all these other groups can be involved at the same time. It just depends on the that client engagement and what all is needed. So they might be bringing in that actuarial support or that total health management support, compliance, et cetera. So, um, so we all work very closely together. Um, the, the specialist um, in conjunction with that core client team to meet the needs of our clients. Um, the next slide, others that we work with, um, so in addition to the clients or prospects um, and building out those relationships and determining how we can service them, um, where we can, maybe we sell projects initially, how can we expand on those projects. We are also working with the different health plans, vendors um, that are out there or stop loss vendors. Um, uh, you know, life insurance, all of those kind of vendors. So working with those. So again, I'll speak more from a pharmacy perspective, but um, we're out there negotiating the contracts, um, ensuring that the vendor is meeting the contractual terms of those contracts in place for the clients, uh, making sure that they're getting the right level of reporting that if there are issues that are being escalated to us that we're helping resolve those issues. Um, so then we are working with other uh, specialists and, and uh, the centers of expertise or COEs there um, as we identify a need that where we might need to work across lines of business to understand or, or to make sure that we're bringing all the information we need to to our clients to meet their needs. So, um, you know, collaborating together across the groups. Um, looking for opportunities to um, maybe sell other parts of Mercer and bring that to the client. So trying to present basically that that kind of united team um, and that when you get Mercer, you get the whole of Mercer. You don't just get a piece of Mercer. So, um, so next, just real quick, I won't go over these, these each of these boxes, but just, this just gives you an idea of the number of people uh, and colleagues that we have in each of our groups. Um, so uh, just kind of a, an interesting slide there to show the breadth of our experience. Um, next slide, the five-step consulting process just kind of gives Kind of a life cycle, and again, this can be varied by a client. We're not we're not um, set to one certain way of doing things, and, and that just raises the importance of listening to our clients, anticipating their needs, figuring out what they need. Um, but you know, at at a basic level, is to make sure we understand what they need. We're walking through that strategy process with them. Um, to develop a plan, um, designing the components of that plan, putting the plan in place, um, and then managing it ongoing for some clients. Um, and, you know, an important part of any anytime you're putting a plan in place is how am I going to know it's successful? So um, figuring out what does success mean to the client? What does that look like for them? Developing those metrics to put in place to make sure as we go along the way, we are checking those metrics and, and making sure we're accomplishing what we set out to do with that client. Um, and then always looking for the, the outcomes and, you know, then determining does anything need to be tweaked or changed, modified, things added to it, um, and then kind of start, you know, start over again and you kind of keep going in that um, through that process with your clients um, for the time that you're consulting them. Um, next slide is pretty much kind of the, the same thing there. Um, so we will skip through that. Let's move on. I know we're, we're right at time. So I want to move on real quickly, hand it back over to Kate to talk about the GHSC teams and what they do. Thanks, Melanie. 
So just as a reminder, um, I work for the government group, the government sector, and what this slide depicts are all of the different business sectors underneath uh, the government sector. So, um, you know, very similar to the commercial side that Melanie was explaining, um, we have pharmacy, actuarial and financial, policy and operations, um, clinical and behavioral health, and informatics. And then you'll see kind of on the, the lower half of the hexagon, um, the uh, different um, areas of special specialization um, that we can offer our clients with those different sectors. And I think it's really uh, certainly one of the, um, the uh, ways that we differentiate ourselves at Mercer is that we do have such um, a deep bench strength is if our clients really have any needs, um, we have so many different sectors and groups that we can call upon to help us assist um, in you know providing whatever deliverables or services our clients are looking for. So you know, as you can see from this slide, there are many different various um, deliverables that we can offer our clients in the government sector. And pharmacy is certainly a piece of those. And we uh, are a very integral member um, on our client teams. So the next slide um, highlights the different professionals that we have um, in our government group. And again, this is, you know, very specific to the, the kind of the types of people that um, we work with. None of us on the phone, as you know, are pharmacists. Um, and, you know, we have different backgrounds. So uh, the reason I'm offering this slide is just to show you kind of the varied um, professionals that you will have the opportunity to work with if you select Mercer um, as your company. And also to underscore that again, you know, none of us came to Mercer with a you know CPA degree or um, as an actuarial student, and yet we've had very successful, um, very fruitful careers. So um, if you don't want to be an actuary or you don't want to be a nurse, um, Mercer still might be the right fit for you. Um, finally, this just kind of highlights um, some of the work that we offer our clients and, and some of the um, stats on the years that we've worked with our clients um, and the amount of revenue that we have, um, you know, helped, helped them save and helped um, supported them in terms of be, being a good steward of, again, we're a government business and so we're being a, a good steward of our clients' money and in turn the taxpayers' money. So, um, you know, one of the things that I like to point out on this slide is that there are eight states that we have been partnering with for over 20 years. And I think that, you know, as I mentioned, I'm at Mercer, I've been at Mercer for 20 years. And I think that speaks a lot to, to Mercer's ability to grow their people as well as continue to support their clients, even though the environment's changing, as you know, the world is changing, you know, even more and more rapidly every year. And, and yet we are a huge company that is nimble enough to um, move with those changes and adapt to those changes and be innovative um, and, like I said, respond both to our internal employees' needs as well as to the external client. So, you know, we've done a lot of, spent a lot of time offering you a lot of information. Um, Michaela, I will turn it back over to you to um, offer some information on how people can, um, you know, answer questions. I believe that you're going to um, allow them to remove the mute capability. Is that correct? Yeah. So if you guys, if you want to stop sharing and we can kind of go to the Brady Bunch view um, instead. And then uh, if you guys have questions, um, absolutely feel free to come off mute and ask your questions. Um, hold on a second. And then um, otherwise you can also, you know, just type them over there in the chat and we will get to them. I think there was one question here so far um, from Rachel. Um, as the panelists may have mentioned, their different paths that got them into health pharmacy consulting. What types of requirements is Mercer looking for right out of undergraduate? So that's, I mean, that's a good question for I mean, me or for the team in terms of 
you know, specifically, generally speaking, what I would say we look for are people who have strong communication skills, people who are analytical thinkers, problem solvers, people who are, um, you know, willing to bring their ideas to the table um, and uh, people who can work collaboratively with, you know, across teams. So strong attention to detail, strong ability to um, manage your time and your priorities. Um, there's always a lot of competing tasks going on. People always ask, what's a day in the life like? There's like no typical day, of course, in the consulting world. And when you think of, you know, what you might be coming into the day to do nine times out of 10, you know, you get shifted into a different direction. So you have to be nimble and able to adapt and reprioritize things as your days go along. Um, anything that the team has to add or has um, to add to that for more specifically, more specifically related to pharmacy or health. Good answer. <laughs> I agree. <clears throat> I think we had another question that came in prior to the start of the call, Michaela, and that was one that was um, asking how is success measured for the health consulting analyst position um, or the analyst position within the pharmacy practice at Mercer. Um, we have, you know, we, we have goals each year that each individual sets, um, you know, pretty much one that everyone has is a billable hours goal. So making sure that um, our, what we consider billable time, because we have to, um, uh, you know, we don't work for free. So we have to meet budgets that we've set out for our work that we're providing to clients. So as part of that, each individual has billable goals that they meet uh, on an annual basis. Um, and so you work closely with your manager to make, make sure that you're getting the appropriate level of work in order to meet those, those goals. Um, and I would say for the majority, we have no problems meeting or exceeding our billable goals. But other metrics are, um, you know, just in kind of more in general, uh, kind of going along with what Michaela was saying is what do we look for is how are you actually performing? You know, how are you managing your projects that you're on? You know, that you're on? How are you communicating with your teams? Um, you know, are you meeting deliverables in a, in a timely way? Are you being thoughtful in your approach? Um, so, you know, lots of that can look different for, for different people, but I think at, at, at a basic level, those are the kind of metrics that for people that are, are wanting to learn and grow and be part of the team um, and are, who are willing to put in the time and effort to get there. Thanks. Are there any other questions out there? Don't be shy, now's the time. Um, I will say if you're thinking of anything right now um, while you're thinking, um, as far as the recruiting process is concerned, um, we will be reviewing applications starting you know, in the next couple of days and looking to um, invite students to uh, a higher view digital interview for the first round. Um, those should those invites will hopefully go out um, by the middle of next week and then we'll give you until um, the following Sunday. So I think whatever, what day is that? Uh, I'm thinking the 14th would be the deadline to complete the higher view once those invitations will go out. And then we'll be reviewing those and looking to schedule virtual final rounds the week of March 1st. Um, there, we did get a lot of interest for these positions. We're currently looking to hire two full-time and two interns um, within the practice. And as you noticed on the position posting, there are several different um, several different offices that you could choose from. So you're, you know, if you get to the interview stage, it's kind of up to you which office that you want to be in. So um, you know, think about that uh, in advance. So. That's kind of that. I see Mark has a question. Mark, go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thank you to all the panelists. It was really great. I have a like, twofold question, I guess. Um, what is the difference between 
the pharmacy consulting that Mercer does and like a pharmacy benefit management firm. And then I know you all are professionals at Mercer, but what are some things that pharmacy consultants do after their time at Mercer? So, Nikesh, you um, want to take that one? Yeah, this Nikesh, I was going to jump in on that. Yeah, so um, the, the first question in regards to um, you asked if what's the difference between a, a pharmacy benefit management firm and what Mercer is doing as pharmacy consulting. Is that correct? Yeah, sorry, I had to unmute. Yeah. <laughs> no worries. Um, okay, so a farm and <laughs> I will try and answer that, uh, what a pharmacy benefit management firm as uh, quickly as I can, but um, just know that that's a pretty dense topic. But um, so a pharmacy benefit management firm or a PBM, um, you know, the best way to think about them really is they're kind of a giant um, intermediary. So they're the ones that are negotiating terms between um, retail pharmacies and, and you know, what they get reimbursed at versus um, what our clients are billed at. So um, we as Mercer are consulting our clients in terms of how they engage with those PBMs. Um, and so we're not actually um, setting those rates or um, providing the product that's being administered, which is um, actually processing the claims for our clients um, and their employees and what's being paid um, to those various pharmacies for the claims that their clients are filling. Um, there's a host of other things that PBMs do, um, but directly to your question, we are consulting our clients in terms of how they engage with those PBMs. Um, so they're two separate think things. In terms of um, what we would do uh, or what our uh, potential options are after a career at Mercer, um, that's very broad. Um, and so I think Mercer provides a very good base in terms of um, what your exposure is and, and where you might want to go um, afterwards. You know, certainly it would be great if everyone stayed at Mercer for their full careers. Um, but, you know, realistically, we know that, you know, part of the benefit of being with Mercer is the exposure that it does give you. So, um, uh, you know, Melanie or, or Kate, I don't know if you want to jump in there as well. Um, you know, we've had uh, colleagues go uh, in, in very different areas. Um, you know, some, some will go back into the PBM space. Um, others have gone um, into kind of direct um, pharmaceutical type roles where um, they're actually looking at different elements of the supply chain. Um, and so I would say that it's, it's not kind of similar to our career path coming into Mercer. Um, going out of Mercer is varied as well. I would agree with you, Nikesh. This is Kate. I think, you know, we've seen some of, I've seen some of my colleagues move to clients. I've seen them go to carriers. I've seen them go back to school to become doctors and nurses. And it's, um, I think that it certainly provides you a lot of exposure and a lot of opportunities to work with different people and on different projects to really hone your skills and even to kind of find out what your strengths are. Awesome. Thank you. I also saw a question in the chat um, regarding whether the work that we do is primarily supporting teams within the clients and developing plans or if it's developing strategies to deliver to the client. So Matthew, I think that was your question. And I think, again, the answer to that is kind of both. Um, so yeah, I work on the government side. But this is true also on the commercial side is that we work very closely with our clients. So depending upon the staff that they have internally and the skill set of that staff and the size of that staff, you know, they might be doing a lot of the developing, you know, in-house and then consulting with Mercer to get uh, our opinions and our thoughts and, you know, to bounce ideas off of us. Or, you know, we might be working very collaboratively with them kind of on a step-by-step -step basis and developing, um, you know, potentially the benefit plans or again, in my, in my side, the different programs that they might be offering. Um, or they might say to Mercer, hey, Mercer, you know, here's our, our current plan. Can you please look at this and offer some solutions for us based on your experience and based on your knowledge? So, um, you know, I hate answers that are like everything, but it's, you know, if I'm being honest, it's kind of the entire spectrum of, of assistance depending upon the client's needs. And again, the um, resources that they have in-house.
Michaela, I think there's a question in there also about Mercer hiring in Canada. Do you have any? Yeah, questions? I'm responding to that in the chat right now, but I don't think that I don't know for sure what um, Canada is hiring for, but I can connect you with um, our recruiter for Canada, Stephanie, and you can reach out to her via email, Rachel. Um, and then I, someone want to take Sam's question. I, I can kick that one off from a government perspective and then hopefully um, someone can jump in from a commercial perspective. So in terms of COVID-19, um, on the government side, basically anything that happens in the government space means more work for Mercer. So if, you know, policy changes happen, if, if there's, you know, if clients are strapped for cash, if they, you know, have an influx of, of um, tax dollars, they're looking to Mercer to, for help. So, you know, COVID-19 really truly just offered Mercer more opportunity for us to um, assist our clients. So, Again, on the government side, we helped um, our state governments look at um, what you know what coverage opportunities were available. We helped monitor and um, what was you know the policies coming out of the federal government. Um, we have a specific COVID task group um, uh, that is in our government group that again looks at all the policies, helps determine um, what the appropriate actions might be for each of our state clients, and then communicates with those states. Because we are an actual actuarial rate setting firm, um, the you know COVID is COVID nineteen um, impacted the twenty twenty rates that we set in nineteen for twenty twenty. So we then had to talk with our clients about um, how the rates that they were paying um, might be impacted by you know obviously during the pandemic people were getting fewer services. So you know was it, how are their rates impacted by um, the pandemic? So again. I think the short answer on the government side is it, it equated to a lot more work um, and you know a way for us to provide additional services for our client. Again, I'll kind of turn it over to my um, more commercial colleagues to offer their insight on the commercial side. You know, from the commercial side, it, it definitely, as it did for the government side, created more work for us. So on top of our already um, normal busy schedules, um, COVID just uh, it, it multiplied that work that we do from different perspectives. So, um, you, you know, it could be from what, you know, should we be allowing or changing um, refill too soon on certain medications? Should, should clients allow for um, uh, a prior off to be applied to a drug that's used for malaria to now use for a COVID patient, um, as an example. Um, so working a lot with the health plans, pharmacy vendors to determine what uh, approaches were they rolling out? Um, how were they communicating to members? Um, working with clients on what to allow for their members, you know, and of course, now more recently, more talk around the vaccines and um, you know how should that be be covered? Should they allow it under the pharmacy plan and the medical plan? So different aspects from that as well. But also aside from that, many clients who are being severely impacted. I have a client who is a rental car company. Um, and of course, as the travel industry was hit heavily with COVID, um, or the impact of COVID um, that really impacted this client's um, from, from many different ways, but they ended up having to lay off half of their people. And so then having to work with their vendors to make sure that we could keep competitive pricing in place for their pharmacy benefit, um, get even given the reduction in workforce. So working with that client through that whole process to make sure um, we're, we're helping them through that process in any way we can. So lots of points of impact. Those were just a few examples that definitely um, expanded our workload and that is continuing. Fantastic. Thank you so much for that. Um, and thank you all for your questions. Um, going once, going twice. If there's no final questions, um, Go ahead. I have one question. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm, sorry, I'm like, I guess, I guess, first of all, I'm um, good morning to some of you guys or good evening or I mean, I mean, or good afternoon. At least for me, it's good morning. 
Um, my name is Leon Wu. I am a little bit late to the meetings because I had a midterm, but I want to ask just a question would be, I guess with working at, I guess with, so when you're working on a project, um, do you completely start from scratch or do you use past projects to as like a starting point? Question. Sure, so that it, it depends on the project is the short answer. Um, we, we do develop templates uh, of different things um, that we can start with. We do try to leverage things, but the important part is even when we have templates or um, you know, client ready materials, there are times when we need to customize those materials for the client and their specific needs. So, um, so that can vary. Sometimes, you know, maybe initially it's rolling out more client ready materials. And then from there we build out and customize specific materials that are specific to the client. Thank you. Good question. Um, all right. Again, thank you all so much for staying on after time, 20 minutes after time. That's awesome. Um, so I will get this recording out for some, you know, if you weren't able to be here for the whole time or you want to take a look at it again. Um, and we'll be we'll be in touch, um, you know, one way or the other in uh, the next week or so. All right. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you.